All right, guys. So I just did a, uh, let me see if I could get some. Uh, yeah, it's about right. Okay. All right. Visit the stream of Vigilating Live Stream Stats and learn how. Hmm. Good day. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, Josh Moore, thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. So I did a, I did a Facebook Live, and I was doing some uh, video share, uh, screen sharing. My kids were acting crazy, and uh, now they're all calmed down. So, and plus, um, my video wasn't working properly, so it's like a big crap. It was like a waste of time. So I deleted the whole thing. So I'm starting up again. So uh, if you're coming by and you see this for the first time, I got another topic altogether. Let me. Ooh, I misspelled that. Let me. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. All right. Uh, okay. So, hey, uh, before we get. Uh, let's save here. Okay. All right. Hey, Ryan Beardshare, thanks for coming by. Hey, before we get um, uh, talking about other things, I want to um, provide a link here for you guys in the comment section. Uh, free, completely 100% free Twitter, uh, Twitter training to help brand yourself. Uh, and uh, whether, no matter what your niche might be or whether your job career is to get more leads um, to what you do. And John Grimes, join. Appreciate you stopping by, John. Thanks. Um, but I'm going to provide that here for you in the link. Okay, and it's basically a profile that is on my Twitter profile. If you guys want to check out my Twitter, it's uh, Will Stoff uh, on Twitter. If you guys want to check that out, so let me go ahead and uh, post that right here. All right, and let's see if I can pin this sucker to the top if they let me. Now it's not going to let me pin it to the top. Of All right, so um, here is my topic today. So, how bad is Voice Bunny for voiceover work? Is it a crapshoot? Now, um, there's a lot of, if anybody has uh, red hot hatred for, uh, for, for sites out there, I know there's a lot of hatred and vile hatred from the, you know, the professional voiceover people, whoever they are that are out there that, are, that uh, refuse to go on to any sites, they don't want to hear anything about social media, that somehow have all these connections uh, and all, and they they will tell you their life story of how hard they worked and slaved in order to get to the top. And not everybody can do it, and only them, the chosen ones, can do it. And uh, and how dare anybody uh, look at these sites because they're all just means of trying to get uh, cheap labor for the most part. Okay, and they're they're trying to. Um, and I've heard this a thousand times. They're devaluing the voiceover business. Um, and the truth is, is you can basically charge anything you want on Fiverr. There's people charging five dollars. There's people charging five thousand dollars. There's people charging industry rates. There's people charging way above industry rates, and they're getting it. There's six-figure earners. There's uh, on uh, Fiverr. Okay, so on 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 sites like this. Okay, there's good sites. There's some bad sites too. Um, but at the same time, when it all comes down to it is I could care less about these people who think this about whatever. I'm just interested in making money, okay, and using my voiceover skills to do it. And if I'm able to make uh, money and it's a viable, something viable that I can do, um, yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, for, for right now, um, you know, I'm basically bouncing between a couple of different sites, but mostly it's been two right now and that is Fiverr and also ACX. ACX is your audiobook site and I've been really banging out some serious audiobooks as of late um, and so I find myself continually going back to these sites and, and, and getting good offers and leads. Now I'll tell you a little bit about my voiceover journey and uh, from, from Voice Bunny because they were the, one of the first ones I really uh, explored and, and tried. Um, when I first got on there I put my rates you know, that were fair, I thought, or they were at least fairly high. I got no response from that site whatsoever. I got a few different things that they would have. They would have, they call, they, they would call, be called contests, or they would be called, I, I only want to say quickies, even though that's not a really good term. But it's these little terms that they would use, and it'd be for little pittance work. All right, I mean, for $10, $20. And in order to get notice on that site and to get a lot of offers on that site, you really had to drop your rates down to the bottom. But I figured, you know, what the heck, I'll just use that to get some traffic from myself. And I think, in the, I think after I did that, even though um, it was super cheap and it was probably not worth my time um, because they, offered, they, they put you through so many hoops 
you know, they want stuff done within a, a few hours. They want stuff done the same day. Okay. And so you get these offers, you, you have two hours to get it done no matter what. So you're running to the, the studio to get it done and you're just kind of bound to it. And if somebody wants a revision on it, you have to do that right away. Or all of a sudden they, they penalize you and they hurt you. And, um, so that was kind of the typical thing and things were, you know, so, but I would get a whole lot of orders. So I'd probably make, you know, I'd have these little tinky orders. I might have maybe a hundred or $200 at the most a month. Are doing this, and I'm just like, oh, this is just brutal. Um, but what happened at Voice Bunny, which is really, really kind of odd and ridiculous? Um, supposedly, there are people that are um, that are self-proclaimed audio engineers, and they're there as quality control. Now, I thought it was just me because I always thought I, I put out a decent product, and maybe I'm in a room. Um, you know, especially if you're at an old radio station like I'm at and you're in a production room where, you know, it's, you know, the, the clients that we deal with don't care what it sounds like as long as it's, it's, it's listen, you can listen to it. It's on the radio, you know, with music behind it. And they're, they're not, they're not too fussy about it. Okay. We're not dealing with, with, uh, we're just dealing with small mom and pop people when you're dealing with local radio for the most part. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm accustomed to as far as quality is concerned. But they're able to somehow, you know, I hear this, this uh, it sounds too boxy or, or it doesn't have the correct sound. So they play audio engineers on you and you're trying to figure out well, what's wrong with this. And from what I've understood is that it's been very inconsistent. There'll be one person who doesn't like it and another person won't have a problem with it. And you'll go through a process where, you know, you're doing, you're, you're uploading the audio uh, for all these auditions, right? And you're... You're in a position where, you know, it's going, you know, it's going fairly well or whatever. And, and, and then you'll have somebody else behind the cubicle or whatever in the cubicle. Hey, Jeff Charette, appreciate you swinging by. That is a quality control person that, that thinks that it's not. So they can override uh, what everybody else thinks. So you're in a situation where you have a lot of people that are in quality control that all have different uh, standards uh, for whatever it might be. And... And the thing is, I've talked to a lot of people that have been in the voiceover industry for a long time that are pros that, that actually put out a decent product. Joe Dixon, Joy Dixon Payne, appreciate you coming by. They put out a decent product, right? And um, Jim Frank joined. Appreciate you joining there, Jim. Uh, they, they put out a decent product. And, and they have said, you know, they've gone through this process, and, and they're so inconsistent. A lot of times they're dead wrong. They don't know what they're doing. Um, and, and, and when it comes down to it, uh, Tim Smith, thanks for coming by. Uh, they're, they act as like they're a bunch of trolls to the point where you've got a couple of things going on with Voice Funny. You have a lot of small work that they send out. Okay, come and do this for a contest, a big contest. You could win this audition. But you go through this ringer of a contest, and you can um, along the way you get bruised, you get penalized nonstop. Uh, Arlene Aliviado, okay, thank you for swinging by. Appreciate it, Arlene. Uh, and you get penalized along the way, so it, so your so your ratings, so to speak, you know, go down the toilet. And then eventually, they'll what will happen is this happens to a lot of people, not just me. It did happen to me. Is that all of a sudden your your uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting nothing. I'm getting no orders from them. I'm getting no requests to do anything. And then all of a sudden they stop sending you stuff. So you'll have this one peak period of they're sending you stuff nonstop, but then you have the quality control Nazis, basically, that are saying, oh, I don't like this, or this doesn't sound right, and da 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 da, da. And the truth is, when it comes to these sites, and especially when it comes to a lot of the clientele, is that they don't even notice half that stuff. And so, they're, so, it's, a, so it's a position that really... Uh, David Eisenheim, I appreciate you coming by. It's a position uh, that, that in a, in a sense, is, is really not needed. You know, you go to any other site, you go to Upwork, you go to, um, you go to Fiverr and uh, many other sites out there. There's no quality control people deciding what's, gonna, what, what's professional and what's not, okay? Because, you know, 99% of the clientele that's going on these sites, you know, don't hear it at all, don't see it. Now... This is what really just kind of disappointed me, okay, with them, is that, so in order for me to get any at all being noticed, okay, you've got to do a couple of things. 
you've got to post your your samples on their website on their profile the more samples you get the more chance you get of being noticed okay and all of a sudden I'll get these email notifications that hey someone's noticing your audio you've just been favorited by one of our clients you've just been favorited by this so I had my rates really low from the time I was I started out getting all these little tinky offers and then I got an offer and this wasn't through them it's not through voice bunny putting out these contests for somebody and and these little dippy things that are out there for you to do to kill yourself for okay for basically nothing all right for like 10 bucks or even five dollars to you know and then they come back with revisions which is just really annoying that you're paying me pennies and you don't like it and you want something else all right and it sounds fine um and so you you get that and then um what happens is uh, that they stop sending you stuff um, but then if you have enough samples here's the one here's the one silver lining with all this if you have enough samples on voice buddy okay you're going to eventually you, you, you will get noticed that if those samples are, are, are pretty decent okay I've got a lot of different samples for all kinds of voice work that I've done I've had I've had over uh, shoot 600 orders in the last year from Fiverr, so I'm, I'm always putting samples up there, that I, things that I've done, things that I like, things that I'm proud of, and all the different categories that they have. And there's one in particular that keeps getting noticed, that keeps getting favorited. And I've gotten one order off there. Now this is what really kind of made me mad because my, my rates were really low. The client was linked in, okay? LinkedIn, huge. And it was for their, uh, it, was, it was a training video for their human resources department, Maxwell at a Deco, thanks for swinging by. It was a, it was a, it was a whole video series. It was quite long, and uh, I was charged thirty five dollars to do that. Now, in the real world, if link and LinkedIn, you know, they're just there to. They're not noticing this thing because it's the rates that were set with me. So, it was probably happening. Happening is. Uh, Voice Bunny is taking a huge chunk. Reggie Brown, appreciate you coming by. Voice Bunny is taking a huge chunk. And, uh, and LinkedIn is paying probably a lot of money. And in the end of the day, I'm seeing 35 bucks to doing this whole project. And I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. But here's the silver lining. I mean, I, I've got to, I, I, you know, you get to this thing online that, you know, this site is great. This site sucks kind of battle or, or whatever and there's a lot of people out there there's one guy that was a pr professional voiceover guy that said you need to stay away from voice fine if you're if you're a member of voice funny you should be ashamed of yourself uh, because you're up you know you are discrediting the voiceover community and it's almost like um, Reggie Brown I didn't get past initial audition either with voice I had to go like three times or whatever the heck they wanted me to do all right and so so the deal is, is that, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have the quality control Nazis basically uh, giving you a hard time, giving you a big hard time. Hey, Liam, who's that over there? Is that you with your daddy? Who's that? Is that daddy? Who's that? Daddy. 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 Okay. So, so the deal is, is that, yeah, they're going to give you a hard time uh, in order to, to get this done. So what really kind of burned me with this is that – I was listening to an audio today of a guy that was going off on this uh, on voice money saying, you know, how dare you even be a member of this because you're uh, devaluing, you know, and they, they have some really weird conspiracy theory in their mind. All these people who've been in voiceover for 30 years and have, and have, and have been lazy because they haven't caught up with the times of marketing yourself to get orders and they have ignored social media and they've done the old school way of doing things and, and being in, you know, getting union rates, whatever the hell that is, okay, or, or um, you know, hobnobbing with and spending thousands and thousands of dollars on, with voice actors and uh, getting in with the right voice actors, getting in with the right ad agencies and their whole little boys network. And I think they feel threatened. They think that all this cheap stuff out there is going to take their precious prices that they're charging huge rates for away, these different sites and whatnot. But I, I think you've got to take these and see how they can benefit me because this is what I've done. After that initial order that I had with LinkedIn that I only got 35 bucks for, I said, okay, you know what? Uh, Voice Bunny, I don't care anymore. 
if they ever send me a little contest order where I'm auditioning with some competition with three or four different people, and then I'm going to be chosen, I really don't care if they have me a number. I'm a number, and I'm an unnamed person. They don't even give me just a number, but it's all about voice money. It's not about the voice talent at all. You know, it's about their company. It's not about you. I don't care about that crap. What I care about is how can I make money from the site? So what I decided to do is that, okay, I'm getting noticed on the site, okay? This client's checking out my stuff. I have submitted enough samples, which they have encouraged me to do, by the way. They said it in an email, hey, send as many samples as you can. One guy sent 700. That was in the email um, that, I can, that I can quote right there. And um, so I decided, you know what? I'm going to jack my rates up. I'm going to jack my rates up a whole lot higher. And I'll probably do that again. And so I recently got an order from the city of Edmonton, um, uh, Alberta, Canada, okay, for $150. That's the most I've ever made on voice money. That's the most biggest order I've gotten for about 180 words. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'll, I'll see what else comes out. Hopefully I'll get some more orders, get some more traction, and I will raise those rates again. And I think something happens here with Voice Bunny. When clients come directly wanting the talent, they're not going through hoops, they're not going through some contest audition bullcrap that all these little power hungry, um, all these little power hungry, immature little uh, little people that are working in quality control who, who probably, you know, for the most part, have zero experience themselves when it comes to voiceover work. That's probably more true than anything. Catherine Chevalier, thanks for coming by. Okay, they probably have little to no experience themselves. Um, and but when clients go to you directly, I think it's like, all right, you know, this is, you know, this they want them. So we're going to not mess with you. And that's the experience that I've received so far is that they're not, you know, said, I'm more going to reject your work. Okay, well, the client's the one that wants me. They don't want you. They don't want your little dippy company with, with all these little hoops to jump through for, for uh, whatever the sound you want, okay, which most people that I've talked to in the voiceover industry that are pros that actually deliver a quality sound have even said that voice – Bunny is ridiculous over the top. They're inconsistent. Most of the guys don't know what they're talking about. So um, so what I'm doing right now, you know, I don't care if they come and shut me down or whatever. They threaten to shut other people down uh, for whatever stupid reason. Um, you know, I don't know if it's a jealousy thing or they have their special people that they like and the ones they don't like. Um, but I'm going to keep continue to do that. I'm going to raise my rates. I'm going to continue to submit samples. And if something comes in, something comes in. And if the price is right, I'm going to take the, the order. And if it isn't, I'm not. And I think that's where I'm at right now with Voice Funny. And I think if, if you've been through the ringer before and you've just kind of discredited them, uh, use them. Uh, fight back against them. Put your samples out there. Um, there's clients out there that are that are into looking at a whole variety of sites. Maybe they use Voice Money before, and they've got the right person before, and they come back to that. So, you know, it's all about the clients out there. It's all the people that are wanting voice work. It's all the people that are wanting a quality product, okay? So use them, okay? Jack your prices up. Submit a ton of samples, okay? Hold on. My son is leaving. Liam, get over here. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. No, sir. The three-year-old will walk out the door and run down the street and disappear. All right. So, so what I'm saying with all this is that, um, is that use these sites to your advantage. I think. When it comes down to it, there are there are uh, there are pros and cons. There are two different positions out there that you can take. It's the position that you you hear a lot from these uh, people that discredit any sites at all, okay? Because um, they have made their careers the old school way of networking and and spending thousands of dollars uh, for uh, certain voice actors. To get the right gigs, okay. Um, that's one school of thought. There's another school of thought that says, "Well, you know, I, I I've been burned by this site. I'm not, I'm I'm done with them. I'm not going to 
deal with it anymore. Um, I'm just going to write it off. I don't think that that's the other thing you need to do either. Um, so, and I, I think there are big problems with voice bunny, but I think there are clients that are out there and if they want me, they're going to find me. And, um, regardless if they have me as a number or a name or whatever, and it, you know, it's not hard to find me now. I do a lot of the same voice work that I do on other sites on Fiverr and I'm getting a lot of attraction on Fiverr. I'm getting popularity on Fiverr with a lot of things that I'm doing, including audiobooks and, and other things. And I know they're going to, you know, they, they will eventually find me. Um, and it is about the clients out there that want work. It's not about the websites. And you've got to remember that. And if you can get the right price, uh, then use them to your advantage. Um, and there are certain people that have um, been on Voice Bunny a long time that have huge traction, that make a living on of, of a Voice Bunny. Um, but I think there's more and more people that – have been burned before that have given up on them that have gone through a pro and I was talking to one guy that I was just kind of blown away with. And he said, you know, I caution you that, um, when you put your samples in, they, some, sometimes they'll decide we're going to go through your samples one day. Okay. And they don't pay much, too much attention to your samples versus the actual work. Um, and we're going to, we're going to, you know, take them down. We don't like them. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to screw with them. And those samples could be, uh, samples they got you uh, they get they got you auditions they got you jobs okay but they're going to mess with you they're going to tinker with it um, but I I think there to my sense is that with all the crazy stuff they have done there has probably been some level of backlash uh, to what they've done um, to people and I think it has effect because I I can't see a, a viable model a business model worth hiring all these people in absolutely unneeded, unnecessary positions for quality control, which is just dumb. And my sense is stick with them long enough, they're probably going to drop it. I can't see them doing it forever. And I think they've been burned so many times, and there's so much online right now that's just like these guys are total a-holes, all right? And uh, you should stay away from them. Um, Liam is trying to hit me with a... Hold on, my wait. Give me that. It'll hurt me. Be nice. Lucky you're three. Okay, so like I said, uh, use them to your advantage. And I, I think what you should do if you're on Voice Bunny, if you've been burned on Voice Bunny, and if it's not working out, if you've written it off, go back to their profile, submit as men, much as work as you can. Here's another thought here for you. You know. Do what you normally do in the course of, of your voiceover career and hold on to all your samples and use them for voice bunny, okay? Because if you do it long enough and if, and if somebody favorites your site or if somebody uh, likes your site, okay, um, it'll show up in an email notification. That means probably if you get enough of those, you're probably going to get a job here in the next week or two. That's probably what's going to happen. So don't write that off. Use them to your advantage. Cecil Corbett Griffin, appreciate you swinging by. Use that to your advantage. And uh, that is a site that is absolutely viable that you need to check out. Again, guys, let me post this one more time. I mentioned this uh, in the beginning of this. If you guys really want to build up your Twitter profile, I've got some awesome free training on how to do that and how to get leads on Twitter. For any business that you're in, it does not matter. It does not matter what profession you're in. This is extremely helpful. I'm providing the link right now. I just posted it in the comment section uh, for you to check out. So when you're out there, if you are doing voice work, Voice Bunny, um, it is a it's a site that has issues. But if you can work through them, if you are if you are still on it, you haven't been booted off for whatever stupid reason they want to boot you off for. Um, Continue to submit um, audio to their site. Continue to send samples. Send as many as you can, 50, 100, 200, 300, as many as you can. Jam it up. Um, if they kick you off, they kick you off. So what? You know, there's other avenues out there. There's, you know, there's bigger fish to fry. But I think it, I would jack your rates up, okay? If you haven't received any orders in a while and you had low, low rates, jack them up as high as you possibly can and see what happens and continue to send those samples out there because I think it's going to bear fruit. I think in the end, if you do that and just wait on them to, to send it out, you're going to get, I've gotten two orders. And I think that, that, that I think that for them, they realize that if, if clients are going out of their way to come to you, they're not going to mess with you. 
I had a one little tip here, if you have used very funny before, and this was Bye. mentioned in the, uh, in the section, you know, he says, uh, the people at night, okay, they're all from Columbia, they're laid back, okay, and they don't care um, about all this uh, quality control stuff. So if you're submitting stuff or auditions or whatever, <laughs> if you're submitting auditions, uh, do it after midnight, he says. Um, and you should be good because the people during the day are the ones that are the, uh, the, the quality control Nazis and, and you're going to run into problems with them. Um, and you don't want them under your skin and trolling what you're doing. But that's what I have here. Don't be scared, guys, uh, of anything. Try these things. Try them out. You'll be pleasantly surprised that you'll be able uh, to figure this out and get through this. And I uh, hope Liam is entertained too. That's going to do it here for this Facebook Live. Appreciate you coming by, guys, as we're talking about Voice Bunny tonight.